Analysts are calling it a landmark antitrust case. Opening arguments have begun in the United States Department of Justice's suit against tech giant Google for monopolizing internet search for what it says is over a decade. What can we expect from the biggest antitrust trial against a big tech company ever? Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, is in Russia for a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin in the far east of the country. Why is the Western press paying so much heed to a meeting that is not unprecedented by any means? And what do Russia and North Korea hope to gain from it? That's the lineup on today's episode of uh, The Daily Debrief. These are the questions we'll be asking our guests and reporters on the show, coming to you as always from the People's Dispatch Studios here in New Delhi. I'm Siddhan Dani. Uh, and if you ho haven't already, uh, before we get into it, I'll ask you to like and subscribe to the People's Dispatch YouTube channel. First up, Google and its parent company Alphabet make upwards of $160 billion in advertising revenue a year. A new antitrust case mounted by the United States Department of Justice, as well as 38 states and territories, argues that the company in fact used unfair as well as restrictive practices to create a monopoly in the internet search space. By signing contracts with original equipment manufacturers on both the Apple as well as Android platforms, uh, spending billions of dollars to ensure Google was the default search engine on their smartphones and other devices. Some sources indicate that as much as 90% of all searches on the internet, at least in the United States, are done through Google, which allows the company to profile users, target ads, as well as set ad rates themselves. It makes, therefore, billions of dollars while also building a fortress that keeps competitors out. It's the heavyweight trial of the century and a reminder of another landmark trial against Microsoft a quarter of a century ago, uh, which set the legal precedents for many of the arguments the government will make over the course of the next few weeks. Baba Sina is back on the show uh, and he's, of course, following this trial with great interest. Let's go over to him for details. Uh, Baba, you're headlining... Uh a show where we have some uh, really solid lineup of stories today. Um, so, you know, you have to sort of live up to the hype that is being made of uh, the United States' uh, litigation now against Google, uh, antitrust litigation that begins today. It's likely to be a long affair. Uh, but outline for us to begin with uh, what the arguments are on both sides and, and which way sort of things are pointed. Right. So this is uh, the really, I mean, probably, hopefully, this is the starting shot of a series of um, litigations which may come against uh, big tech in general, right? So uh, for the last, I don't know, for the last five, 10 years, people have been saying that we are living in this, uh, different people have called it different things. Surveillance capitalism is one of the names which come up. Um, and um, the tech monopolies, and, and, and so, so the, the basic issue is that these, uh, there are a handful of companies, uh, it's a US multinationals, which have grown uh, to occupy monopoly positions in their uh, spaces. And, uh, and, and, and this is, when, we, when I'm saying their spaces, their spaces are not limited to tech. Uh, yeah. For example, Google, uh, even though we think of it as a tech company, Google really makes its money from advertising. Hmm. And so, Google, so you, you should think of Google at a, as an advertising company, and it has established a monopoly position in the advertising market worldwide, right? And, and so there are other companies like Apple and uh, Microsoft and um, Facebook, right? So, so these companies have, Amazon is the other company, which have occupied these monopoly positions in large like industries, right? And um, so, so there has been a talk for a long time of controlling them because they kind of hurt the marketplace, they hurt right. innovation, they hurt competition. Uh, but they have become too powerful uh, to be, like some people feel they have become too powerful to be controlled, right? And so mm -hmm. this, uh, this this kind of suit, which has come to the uh, district court of the uh, District uh, of Columbia, uh, is the first such attempt to try to 
counter this, this increasing monopoly power of these tech companies. And the first case is um, uh, been brought by the Department of Justice, uh, along with 38 um, states and territories of the US. Um, mm. so, so that's like US has 50 states. So 38 is a like big chunk, a, a big chunk of those states. And uh, they are um, alleging that uh, Google has been using its monopoly powers uh, to to kind of uh, this uh, to to restrict competition in the search uh, market, right? So as we know, the, the Google search is kind of the default search, right? So when people say go to search on the internet, they say yeah. why don't you Google it, right? It, yeah. That is the monopoly position it has. Yeah. And um, uh, what the the contention of the of the um, Department of Justice of the U.S. government is that uh, um, Google has unfairly restricted access to the competition. And how Google does is that Google has um, uh, tied up deals with phone manufacturers, right? Uh, uh, like like let's say Apple or Samsung, Apple. right? Uh, the big phone players and um, they have made Google search as a default search in the uh, in these phones, right? See, uh, uh, so the two the two biggest chunks of the phone market, one is Apple, the other are the Android based phones. Now, mm. if you take Android, like if you are a phone manufacturer and uh, you are using Android, which is kind of pretty much everybody other than uh, Apple, Apple, then uh, it comes with these Google services, and and search is like the main of these services. The other services are like Gmail and uh, Maps, other things you use in your Android phone. But search is the key thing for Google, right? And and so uh, how Google makes its money is you go to Google to uh, to search uh, whatever you are looking for, and uh, through that uh, uh, Google has a profile of you because of the main various tools you use on Google, right? Um, yeah. And then Google gives you these search results. Some of these results are what I call paid search, right? So these are what advertisers are advertising for whatever you are searching for, right? And that's how Google makes its money. And like the bulk of Google's huge revenue come from search. And so then Google is kind of using that monopoly position to, um, uh, to uh, basically force the major platform on which people search, which are now pretty much uh, mobile, which is like ubiquitous, right? smartphones. And so they've gone to Apple and 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 uh, Samsung and all the um, uh, Android phone, uh, all the Android phone makers by default take uh, Android, which comes bundled with the Google services. And then Apple. So so the the the, the uh, uh, contention is that they paid more than ten billion dollars per year to Apple and these other companies uh, to. Uh, be the default search engine. Be the default search engine. So that's the government's content. What yeah. Google is contending is that it is relatively easy to replace Google as a search engine with some other search engine, right? Let's say Bing is, is an alternate search engine. It's relatively yeah. easy to do that. Uh, me personally, I don't think that most uh, uh, regular users, users. Look, if you are a techie, you may, you may figure it out. But if you are a regular user, it's not easy to figure out how to replace search on your phone with uh, with some of the search engines. So yeah. so that's the, the, the key suit which has been brought and, and it's going to be argued for the next uh, like a few months, I think. It's going to be a long process, right? Many witnesses, many documents are going to be produced from both sides. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just, just opening arguments, uh, I guess, uh, taking place at this point. Uh, but but does it look like a strong case that the government is making? We've, of course, talked before about uh, similar antitrust cases uh, against Google and other big tech companies uh, in Europe, of course. The uh, United States, uh, its biggest sort of uh, go at tech in 20 years since Microsoft. Uh, what do you make of the environment in which all of it's happening? And, and how do you see sort of that, uh, the discourse around this trial proceeding over the next few months, Baba? It, um, you, you're right, like this is the first big case in a long, long time, right? I think more than uh, 25 years. The last case was uh, against Microsoft in 1998 for Microsoft using its Windows operating system to, to have mon similar mono uh, monopoly powers over Microsoft apps like Office and, and, and web browsing. 
Uh, yeah, at that time, Microsoft lost that case um, and was um, asked to split up, right? But then on, on appeal, uh, they kind of reached a settlement and, and they kind of got away without uh, too much damage to the company. Uh, so, and if you look look at it, the, the last case where a company was actually broken up, like a large company was broken up was at and and that was in the mid 80s. So mm. it's been a generation since we have seen any action against this massive monopoly. Um, what has changed, I think, is in the last 10 years, people have increasingly got uh, uh, concerned about their lack of privacy, right? And, and uh, the invasion of privacy by, by these large tech companies. And I think uh, with Cambridge Analytica, uh, that kind of concern became mainstream. Before that, mm. tech guys were saying, look, like bad things are happening. Right, but with Cambridge Analytica, with the like series of elections where where the, the, uh, these these uh, uh, tools were used to, in fact, influence elections. Right, like yeah. the, the Brexit in in, in uh, UK, yeah. uh, the the first Trump campaign, and, and we have seen such campaigns all around the world. Right, where where um, uh, right wing governments have come into power uh, using. Um, uh, Tech, uh, using um, effectively social media campaigns, right? Mm. Where, not social media campaigns exclusively, but social media played a very big role in it and, yeah. and uh, targeted campaigns. So, so that has made this concern now mainstream, right? And, and in at least in the US, uh, I think there is a bipartisan uh, kind of uh, consensus, consensus, right? Between the Republicans and Democrats that something needs to be done, right? Clearly something I think does need to be done. Uh, mm. But given the power of these tech companies, so I mean, if you look at the 10 biggest companies by a market cap worldwide, eight yeah. of them are tech companies, right? Mm -hmm. So the 10, among the 10 biggest companies, eight companies are these tech companies. They wield enormous political influence. So whether um, anything will finally be done or not remains to be seen. But I think these are important steps in, in at least uh, in the right direction. I think the case is strong, right? I mean, uh, like I said, I mean, off the bat, if I ask you, how do you replace search on your uh, on your uh, phone? It's not something you can, I mean, maybe you can research, Google it and figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it's not something you can just know how to do readily, right? So 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 I I actually think that Google's uh, assertion that it's something you can change easily. Yeah. I don't think that's nice, right? But we'll see what happens in the case. Now, uh, the other thing is that this is only the first of such cases which has been brought up against Google. Um, mm -hmm. There is an expectation that, that by early next year, maybe as early as Jan 2024, another case is going to be brought by the Department of Justice. And right. this is going to attack Google's uh, ad business. Right now, that is the core of Google's money-making machine, right? Yeah. And, and so search is kind of the base, right? You, you you come to Google to search, and then the ad platform is how Google make, monetizes that base, right? Yeah. And um, so Google has a double monopoly on the search platform, right? So, mm -hmm. so on from both, it kind of squeezes both the uh, the content creator, right? On yeah. these platforms, you are putting the ads. And the advertisers, Those right? Who are, yeah, yeah. It's completely, like because Google controls both the people who are placing the ads and people who are getting the content, and as well as the as the 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 product. The product is you and me, right? We are being yeah. sold, uh, and, and so Google controls the end, all all these uh, various entities, right? Mm. And it's opaque, right? Uh, like the advertisers don't know. Uh, who who is getting paid out? Like how their ad budget is actually getting paid? Mm. The 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 content creators don't know how much of the uh, how, how much of the ad revenue is coming to them for their content. And you and me are completely unaware that we have been profiled, right? Uh, so um, so that's a strong case again. Now uh, so so that's the second such case against Google. Now there is uh, there are um, these. Um, news that is coming in that uh, the U.S. Depart uh, Department of Justice is going to bring up a similar case against uh, Facebook uh, for, for privacy um, violation. Right. And you said EU has already um, gone after Google uh, for monopoly practices in the, in the EU region, and, and they have put a large fine on Google. Google is appealing that. Let's mm. see how that goes. 
even mm. countries like in, in in countries like india even though the, the scale of the fine is relatively smaller but in the the, the competition uh, commission in commission. india has fined yeah. google for a very similar charge right uh, that using monopoly uh, its monopoly position to restrict uh, competitors in the android phone market yeah so we are seeing uh, like this concerted effort by different governments and different jurisdictions to somehow try to grapple the big beast of big tech um i personally am rooting for uh, some control over big tech right at least uh, like yeah. not have these wild west days where where they do whatever they want uh, but but again like we said given their political power uh, let's see how far uh, the government succeed in in, in controlling them yeah it should be interesting uh, either ways to see uh, how things develop uh, baba thanks very much for that update and also explaining what is uh, actually it goes back also uh, a while and it's a, a kind of complex and nice little web that they've managed to create so thanks for putting that very clearly and and we'll catch you again for an update very soon in what is a vital visit for both his leadership and the future of his country the north korean leader kim jong un is in russia to strengthen ties with the eurasian giant via a meeting of course with president vladimir putin ties between russia and pyongyang are old and despite ups and downs over the course of history they are also strong putin in particular has backed the most sanctioned economy in the world by providing aid and writing off billions of dollars in debt this time too kim is coming with a wish list including of course vital food supplies but with the shadow of the ukraine war over so much of the western media's coverage of everything to do with russia the meeting is being billed as more of a political statement and to increase military cooperation let's find out if that's what uh, dr abdul rahman who covers the region for people's dispatch has to say about all of that abdul uh, good to have you with us on daily debrief as always we're, we're closing the show today with uh, maybe more perspective than anything else Uh, on uh, on this uh, much talked about in the western media meeting between the leaders of russia and uh, north korea which is uh, not so unsurprising or unusual actually uh, of course uh, if you see the the amount of attention which uh, uh, north korea's visit uh, kim's visit to russia has uh, grabbed in the western media which usually considers it as one of those irrelevant pariah states in the global politics that basically shows the panic or whatever you call call it in the west in the west in particular the us had to basically even before the meeting was it seems that uh, was finalized the us had incline uh, kind of uh, uh, inkling about it and kind of uh, issued a threat that if kim visits and uh, kind of sells weapons to uh, russia uh, that that's what that their primary fear that russia is seeking weapons from uh, north korea uh, just like russia was seeking weapons from iran from what not any country in the south africa the countries which were which are not considered to be a military uh, uh, a large military producers in any way major players yeah major players in global military trade i'm uh, trade i'm straight even the us has been basically making such allegations and most of these allegations have been found uh, um, uh, false uh, a lie so it, here also that the speculation is russia is basically meeting kim primarily to seek weapons hmm. but also they are also uh, confused and they are also saying that it is primarily russia's attempt to sell technology to uh, 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 north korea okay. they are they need russian technology to put on code improve their uh, uh, missile technology and so on and so forth so there is a complete uh, um, confusion in the western media but they also it seems that they are quite um, rattled you can see with this particular visit which basically uh, uh, means nothing more than kind of uh, an attempt by both the countries to develop the bilateral relationship given the fact that the both of them are by the way before we come to that the the, the us threat the emptiness or hollowness of that threat is quite obvious north korea is already one of the most sanctioned countries in the world wow. and what more us can do to kind of uh, so that the north korea can pay price that can uh, that one should uh, uh, try to it is difficult to understand so this this visit is nothing more than an attempt by both the countries 
given the uh, uh, given the fact that the, there is a geopolitical shift in the global politics and the west has basically both of them are victims of the global sanctions west western sanctions in particular and they basically see an opportunity here to develop a greater relationship uh, and, and they share a border they share a history this is nothing new their relationship is not new it is a 75th five year since they have uh, diplomatic relations so instead of looking at uh, uh, two countries trying to resolve their bilateral issues and kind to have a greater relationship this mm. is made out to be a geopolitical event by the west and that basically it seems that kim and putin have, have basically uh, they are also enjoying this attention and they're uh, they're basically using it as a forum to kind of give a message and that's what the significance of this particular uh, event uh, for the global politics says right uh, you you rightly mentioned uh, the shared i mean the, the, came arrived on a train uh, and the far east of russia is a region anyway that the russians seek to promote investment in this is all happening in in the backdrop of the eastern economic forum uh, meetings as well so so there is a context for the, the meeting as well and and uh, given what you are saying uh, abdul the impact of those sanctions and in, increasingly uh, western isolationist uh, kind of attitude towards russia as well so so isn't it natural in that circumstance that the two would seek to seek cooperation and food aid and exchange uh, particularly with the green deal has fallen through and the black sea as well all of these factors coming together exactly you see if you see uh, russian foreign minister lavrov in fact has basically stated which which is going to be a very big uh, development if it is confirmed that russia no longer supports the international sanctions against north korea which were imposed first in 2006 and extended in uh, 2017 it means and he also claimed by the way that china agrees with russian stand on it it means two of the uh, uh, security council permanent members mm. no longer support the extension of uh, uh, sanctions uh, against north korea that would mean a big uh, uh, achievement for north korea it will also uh, uh, basically a, be a big blow diplomatically to the us and its allies and that is one part and if you see uh, you rightly pointed out that uh, these sanctions have been responsible for a large scale humanitarian crisis in north korea the reports are, of course there is a very less report in the global media about the impact of the uh, these sanctions inside uh, north korea oh, yeah. but that is a well known fact mm. and uh, uh, and north korea is seeking and i think this has been on record that this meeting is primarily to see uh, increased humanitarian uh, help from russia so unlike the western uh, propaganda which basically is talking about uh, weapons deal and so on and so forth it may be the case that there is some kind of uh, discussions on that also and russians did not deny it but more than that it is also an attempt uh, by north korea to seek much more food aid which mm-hmm. basically uh will address some kind of uh, uh, economic concerns within uh, north korea so apart from it being uh, uh, a, a, a visit to basically deal with the uh, technologies related to uh, uh, military and all it is also a, basically an attempt to kind of deepen the relationship and that's what uh, russia is uh, emphasizing no matter what the west says it is russia's right to develop relationship with its neighbor and uh, 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 in the benefit of russia of course and also in the benefit of the its neighbors that also means that the larger uh, region which includes uh, china which includes uh, uh, korea which in, which includes other uh, countries in the region and so this is not only a military uh, 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 a visit which yeah. basically has a military yeah. connotation it yeah. is a visit basically uh, which has a larger uh, implication for both bilateral and regional uh, 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 politics all right thanks very much abdul uh, just in time and thanks for putting it in very clear context for us this that's all we have on uh, this episode of daily debrief as always we take this opportunity to invite you to head to our website peoplesdispatch.org don't also forget once again to follow us on the social media platform of your choice whether that's facebook instagram 
or, or Twitter. And of course, don't forget to like and share this video as well. Thank you for watching. We'll be back same time, same place tomorrow. Until then, goodbye.